Welcome to this video. I'm CPA Paul Gaido. In this video, we are going to learn about trial balance, errors and omissions, and end of year adjustments. Kindly remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Treatise of Accounting Information Systems. Please also watch our previous videos to understand the basic concepts in accounting. In this lesson's objectives, we are going to learn about trial balance, errors and omissions, and end of year adjustments. On trial balance, we are going to define a trial balance, discuss purposes of a trial balance, various types of trial balances, methods of preparing a trial balance, and limitation of a trial balance. On errors and omissions, we are going to discuss errors that do not affect trial balance, errors that affect the agreement of a trial balance, and a suspense account. Lastly, on end of year adjustments, we are going to define end of year adjustments, types of journal entries made at the end of the year, discuss various types of adjusting entries and adjusted trial balance. The fourth process in accounting cycle is preparation of trial balance and end of year adjustments. A trial balance is a summary of all general ledger accounts balances. At the end of an accounting period, all ledger accounts are balanced off and a summary of all balances is prepared in form of a trial balance that shows debit balances and credit balances. The purposes of a trial balance are it serves as an evidence that double entry system has been complied with, it helps in ascertaining arithmetic accuracy of the ledger accounts, it helps in locating errors, it is the link between the books of account and the financial statement, it summarizes all ledger accounts balances, and it facilitates preparation of financial statements. Types of trial balance. There are three types of trial balance. That is, an adjusted trial balance, adjusted trial balance, and post-crossing trial balance. An adjusted trial balance reflects ledger account balances after all financial activities are recorded as they are on a day-to-day -day basis before making any adjustment. Adjusted trial balance shows ledger account balances after making end-of-year adjusting entries. Adjusted trial balance is used for making final accounts for external reporting. Post-crossing trial balance shows ledger account balances after making crossing entries at the end of an accounting period. Post-crossing trial balance is used to verify that nominal accounts, that is, account for revenue, expenses, and drawings, have been reset to zero before the beginning of another financial year. There are three methods of preparing a trial balance. That is, gross total method, net balance method, and compound method. In gross total method, the total value at the end of the debit and credit columns of the ledger account is recorded in the trial balance. This method consumes less time, but it's not useful in preparation of final accounts. Therefore, it is not generally used. In net balance method, the ledger accounts are balanced off by finding the difference between the total debits and the total credits, the resulting balances are then used to prepare a trial balance. This is the most commonly used method of preparing a trial balance. Lastly, compound method is a combination of both gross total method and net balance method. In compound method, totals of both sides of the ledger accounts are written in separate columns. Alongside the totals, Ledger account balances are also written in separate columns. That is, debit balances are written in debit column, while credit balances are written in credit column. This is a summary of how a trial balance looks like. The acronym DIRA shows the expected general ledger accounts balances. Drawings, expenses, and assets are expected to have debit balances, where liabilities, equity, and revenues are expected to have credit balances. A trial balance is limited in that it is not part of the final accounts. Secondly, 
The arithmetic accuracy of a trail balance is not a full proof that there are no errors in the books of account. There can be six types of errors that will not be detected by a trial balance. That is, error of formation, error of original entry, error of commission, error of principle, error of complete reversal of entry, and compensating errors. Error of formation occurs when a transaction is completely omitted from the books of accounts. That is, the transaction is not recorded at all. Error of original data entry occurs due to either transposition errors, that is, recording long amount, such as 12,000 instead of 1,200, or double posting of a transaction. Error of commission occurs when a transaction is recorded in the correct class of general ledger account, but on the wrong subsidiary ledger account. For instance, a credit sale to customer A is debited to customer B's account. Error of principle occurs when a transaction is recorded in the wrong class of general ledger accounts. For instance, treating an expense as an asset or treating a liability as an income. Error of complete reversal of entry occurs due to long application of rules of double entry. That is, instead of debiting, you credit, or instead of crediting, you debit. Compensating errors are multiple unrelated errors with similar amounts or amounts that net off at the end of the day. Errors that affect the agreement of the trial balance include casting errors, errors in posting transactions in ledger accounts from journals, and errors in transferring ledger account balances to trial balance. Casting errors are errors that occur when adding up transactions in a column. Overcast means getting a higher figure than the actual figure. Undercast means getting a lower figure than the actual figure. Errors in posting transactions from the journals to the ledgers may include posting long amount from the journals to the ledger, posting a transaction more than once, and failing to post a transaction from the journals to the ledger. Errors that may arise when transferring ledger account balances to trial balance may include committing a mistake in balancing ledger accounts, recording long amount of the ledger account balance to trial balance, and writing a ledger account balance on the wrong side of the trial balance. Suspense account. Basically, all errors affecting the balancing of a trial balance necessitate creation of a suspense account. A suspense account is a temporary account whereby unclassified transactions are recorded. Transactions on the suspense account are investigated and reclassified into the correct general ledger account. A suspense account balance can either be a debit balance, that is an asset, or a credit balance, that is a liability. End of year adjustments are changes that require to be made on the balance sheet and the profit and loss account in order to ensure that the financial statements are accurate and shows a true and fair view of the state of affairs of an entity. End of year adjustments are the adjusting entries made on the trial balance in order to ensure that the final accounts and the financial statements for external reporting comply with the reporting standards adopted by the entity. At the end of an accounting period, there are three types of journal entries that are made in order to ensure that the financial reports comprise with the reporting standard. These types of entries include adjusting entries, closing entries, and reversing entries. An adjusting entry is a journal entry for making end-of-year adjustments in the ledgers in order to recognize Accrued revenues, deferred revenues, accrued expenses, prepaid expenses, contract assets, and contract liabilities. A closing entry is a journal entry for transferring balances from temporary nominal accounts into permanent accounts in the balance sheet. It involves transferring of balances from revenue, expenses, and dividend accounts into balance sheet. Crossing entries ensures that Nominal accounts begin an accounting period with zero balance. On the other hand, 
a reversing entry is a journal entry made at the beginning of the year to reverse selected entries that were adjusted at the end of the previous period in order to recognize them in the current period. Such reversing entries include reversing prepaid expenses and reversing deferred revenues recognized at the end of the previous period. The end of year adjusting entries are made before the financial statements are prepared. The adjusting entries involve recognizing and reporting of accruals and arrears, advances and prepayments, provisions and contingencies, devaluations and impairment, and reclassification of assets and liabilities. Accruals is the amount of money for an obligation that has been performed but has not been invoiced. For instance, and build rent expenses. On the other hand, alias is the debt that is long overdue, that is, a debt that is past due date. Prepayment is the amount paid in advance, that is, amount paid for obligation that is yet to be performed. For instance, insurance paid for a period beyond the accounting period. Provisions are current financial obligation of uncertain amount and timing. Provisions involve setting aside some money by an entity for a known liability or anticipated future loss such as provisions for bad and doubtful debts, provisions for depreciation, provision for delinquent loan losses, and provision for damaged and obsolete inventory. On the other hand, contingencies are possible obligations that may arise from past events whose outcome is based on a future uncertain event. Contingencies are obligations that may occur but cannot be measured reliably. Such obligations that may occur but cannot be measured reliably include pending court cases, customer warranty, credit guarantees, customer loyalty points, and unutilized leave days. Devaluation is the significant change in fair value of an asset from its current amount. An entity should revalue its assets on a regular basis to ensure that the current amount does not differ materially from its fair value. On the other hand, impairment is a reduction in current amount of an asset that is triggered by a decline in its fair value. Impairment is a way of recognizing any drastic reduction in recoverable amount of an asset. An entity should test impairment of an intangible asset at least once per year and on a regular basis should test impairment of other assets. Reclassification involves assigning a different class or category to an asset or a liability. An entity should compute the current portion of long-term liabilities and reclassify it as a short-term liability. The entity may also reclassify non-current assets held for sale and discontinued operations. After making end-of-year adjustments, the entity prepares an adjusted trial balance. The adjusted trial balance shows the contra-asset accounts as well as reclassified assets and liabilities. The adjusted trial balance is then used to prepare financial statement for external reporting. It ensures that the entity complies with the financial reporting standard adopted by it. Thanks for watching our video tutorials. Kindly remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Traitors of Accounting Information Systems. Please hit the notification bell so that you can be notified when we update a new video. Like this video, leave a comment, and share it on your social media platforms.